2025 is nearly here and if you're serious about making game-changing money in the next 12 months, well then I have put together three of the top cryptocurrencies that we are watching that we're thinking are gonna have big potential over the next 12 months. Now these aren't just random picks, these are ones that my analysts and I have been working really hard on trying to find some good risk to reward ratio assets that we think you should be looking at to potentially add to your portfolio over the next 12 months. Now, before I get into these three coins, it is very important to understand that the Ethereum Bitcoin chart has not been favorable to altcoins for the past three years. We've essentially been in the downtrend against Bitcoin over the last three years. So with your portfolio, I highly, highly recommend having a large amount of Bitcoin in your portfolio as we are still in that downtrend. And I don't think we're gonna to start to reverse that until perhaps Q1 next year in early 2025 based on where we are in the market. Now this has happened in every other bull market. A lot of people are going, why is Ethereum down? Why are altcoins not performing against Bitcoin? What's actually happened to every other Bitcoin bull market? What tends to happen is Bitcoin leads the market, we break through all time highs, we get that price discovery, and then Bitcoin starts to consolidate and money flows down into other assets. Now we're not quite there yet, so timing is super, super important. So you wanna to start to look at these assets, maybe not deploy just yet, but having an eye on some of these assets to start to have your own portfolio. Now, if you've got a lot of altcoins in your portfolio, that's actually gonna be a big detriment to your performance over the last 12 or 18 months. And it's something that we continue to teach that Bitcoin, regardless of what goes on in the world, will continue to grow uh, based on you know, macro factors and where you know, fiat supply is coming in, inflation, Everything that is going is Bitcoin's direction. So ensure that if you're wanting to add risk to your portfolio, you don't add too much risk and go the other way. Now, the first coin we wanna look at here is Uniswap and the native token Uni. Now, this is probably out of the three, um, my, my least bullish one. I am bullish on all of these three, but in terms of the three, uh, the next two I'm super excited on, but Uni especially, I love the product. Now, the problem with Uni is that the token hasn't necessarily appreciated it. In fact, it's actually down 85% from all time highs but the volume that Uniswap has had has been um, you know, massive and it continues to have a great you know, stronghold in the DEX volume. Now, if we look at you know, the, the launches Uni has, has had as well, it recently launched Unichain, a new layer two on Ethereum that it really hopes to be the home of DeFi. Now I'm super bullish on DeFi, it's probably why I like Uniswap. I think DeFi will continue to be uh, an innovation that will continue to drive. It's not the most sexy narrative because it is a little bit old right now, but I think it's gonna continue to build a lot of on-chain capital as we go into you know, a maturing crypto market over the next few years. But really, you know, I think Unichain will continue to regain its dominance and will continue to see utility based on its new network design as it flows of that um, you know, fee revenue back into the Uni stakers. So, um, one of the biggest problems, I guess, with the Uni token is it's just been more of a governance token over the last few years, but they're trying to continue to drive revenue back into the Uni token, which I think is gonna be really, really positive. But the big catalyst for Uni is gonna be the V4 launch that's coming um, and, and maybe already launched by the time this video comes out in the next week or so. So essentially it's the fourth version of Uniswap um, where they got this new feature called hooks. Now, essentially hooks are a way to create custom applications or contracts that run on Uniswap v4. So it essentially allows developers to create products on top of Uniswap, so it makes it a lot easier. Now, this is a huge deal because it's essentially going to create and unlock a range of new applications and use cases on Uniswap, essentially becoming that home of DeFi versus just a DEX. It's going to become a platform where people can build on top of. Now, Uniswap is also uh, building its new um, new application, which you know went through a total rebrand and it launched its own wallet and mobile app. Um, and the user experience is, is so much better now on top of Ethereum. And I think this has been one of the downfalls on Ethereum is the user experience on you know Solana, for example, has been way easier to utilize. So with the new Uniswap integration, you can essentially just plug in the Google Chrome uh, plugin and you can start to get access to all of your tokens and you can start to you know, build on chain super, super easy. Now, if we look a little bit deeper into the volumes, the dominance of market share continues to maintain market lead on Ethereum with Uniswap. So although slightly reducing, this has been because of the, um, the rise of Solana and meme coins, which have increased the, the DEX volumes, Uniswap still remains a 32% market share in total DEX volume, which is, is down 50% year over year, but that is uh, it, with the increase of competition across the different chains, which you can you know, arguably say that all of the attention has been over on Solana and some other chains over the last 12 to 18 months. So a big focus for us is whether or not Uniswap can continue to hold that sort of market lead. Um, and price action really has been, uh, has been quite poor. So although the fundamentals on Uni has been really, really great, the rally of this cycle still remains down 86%. 
um, versus uh, you know last bull market. So one I'm keeping an eye on. I'm a big fundamentals guy, but again, with with that being said, fundamentals has not been the catalyst for drivers for this market, and I, I still think that you know those new chains, the narratives, the excitement of retail investors continues to be the leading indicator as to performance of these tokens. So yes, fundamentals are good, but you need to have that backing of you know is there an excitement? Is there a narrative that you can get behind that's going to push these these uh, these assets forward? And Ethereum has not been in the limelight whatsoever. Now. Will I? Will you know? Do I think that'll return? Yes, I do, and we've seen that in previous cycles. Usually, it takes for everyone to give up on a token, just like Solana back when it hit like you know whatever it was, eight dollars or ten dollars with the FTX fund. Everyone gave up. Everyone said it was dead, and then we start to see that reverse. Ethereum is going through that exact same thing now. Ethereum still has the most amount of capital on chain across any other asset. It continues to be um, the most secure, um, you know, layer one blockchain. And I continue to see more and more, um, you know, people build consumer applications on top of it. And I do think that killer consumer app is going to come in the next few years, and I do think it's, that's going to be on Ethereum, and that's where I think Ethereum will start to turn more capital flow on, and then these other projects on top of Ethereum will perform well. But it's a bit of a patience game for the time being, so don't get caught up into, you know, the fear of, you know, these assets not doing anything just yet, um, because I do think that'll turn soon. Now, number two is an asset I recently added to my portfolio, and that is a new layer one next-gen blockchain that's been all the rage over the last few months, and that is SUI. So moving a little bit away from DeFi, the layer one blockchain narrative has been massive, right? Anywhere I go with you know, meetings or conferences, the next-gen layer one blockchains have been a super, super big conversation, especially with the VCs. And essentially, VCs see these layer one blockchains as a way they can make billions of dollars, right? Infrastructure level blockchains, uh, assets that can really grow in momentum and the blockchain, uh, sorry, the market cap of those assets can grow much greater than consumer applications. And I think that's why there hasn't been a lot of, you know, um, development, you know, in the consumer application space is because the VCs don't like investing there because they don't get the, the biggest return. You know, the only consumer applications that have really performed well or have made it to some sort of, you know, um, uh, I guess outside of crypto mainstream adoption has been poly market, right? So again, these next gen layer ones uh, have been attracted um, from the bigger capital and SUI has been one that, you know, has jumped off the back of the Solana bandwagon. Um, and, you know, SUI is attracting a lot more TVL now off the back of that. So do I think this can, you know, generate large multiples from here? I do think it probably, you know, uh, performs just as well as Solana, maybe a little bit better. Um, and that's why I've added, you know, SUI to my to my portfolio. I've got about 2.5%. Now, historically, the performance of layer one blockchains have been essentially based on the amount of TVL that it's uh, been able to drive from outside investors. So as more value is locked into the network's ecosystem, it attracts more developers, more projects, more liquidity, more PR, more everything. And that's how um, it can increase its overall you know, market share and competitiveness. Now, since November 2023, SUI TVL has climbed from 90 million to over 1 billion. So it's up over a thousand percent in a little over a year. And in the last 12 weeks, SUI has grown from 300 million to over a billion, it's up 233% in just over uh, three months, which is pretty crazy. Now, the other thing we need to be careful of, especially with these VC-backed projects, is the token unlocks. Now, unlike other protocols or layer ones, which have extremely fast unlocks, like you know, Solana, a lot of these projects really try and get their VCs to unlock their tokens, and you know that puts a lot of sell pressure on the market. SUI has done things a little bit differently. So they've already had a big unlock this year in April 2024, and they don't actually have any other big unlocks to come. So although 65% of the supply is yet to be unlocked, the supply will gradually hit the market rather than all at once. So by 2030, only 50% of the total supply will be unlocked. There is no short-term unlock dumps that could uh, help this bull market, which is pretty unique. And I think that's been a big catalyst for investors to have a little bit more confidence that they're not gonna get in and then have all their VCs just dump their tokens on them on day one. So one of the, uh, one of the big things a lot of people overlook is those token unlocks. And you can see on that chart here, just those you know long drawn out token unlocks versus some of the other projects. And this goes to all of your altcoins, by the way, you know, especially those utility tokens. Be aware of the supply increases. Those supply increases can completely kill um, you know, the demand of a project and really put sell side pressure on the project. And that's why a lot of these projects don't you know, grow in size is because of there's so much sell pressure demand because a lot of those VCs get early access. And we need to be wary of that, that those VCs are the ones that you know fund the projects. The projects make a lot of money. VCs that make a lot of money, and the retail are the eggs of liquidity. And you need to be aware of that. Now, SUI has a few different you know points of difference, I guess, versus the other um, you know blockchains. And the biggest one for me is the the gaming unit. So the SUI Play gaming unit, currently in its pre-sale phase, 
Um, and it's trying to build this dedicated gaming platform on the SUI blockchain with a focus on low latency, high performance experience in Web3 gaming. So we know that the gaming is gonna be a big um, you know, uh, narrative in the retail cycle. And there's a lot of games and assets trying to come into crypto and a lot of you know, external developers. There's a big fight for market share on where those games are gonna be built. And you know, Solana's fighting for it, Ethereum is, and SUI is as well. Um, and I think that's a big catalyst for SUI in the next few years. And also creating wallets is super easy. So if you've used SUI before, you can actually create your own um, you know, wallet using your Google login account. And this has been a big thing, I think the user experience for people being able to use these wallets is a big, um, a big driver for growth and um, you know adoption. That's why Solana has been so well received because it's so easy to create a wallet, right? So Sui um, has got these new novel uh, you know zk login solutions that allow you essentially to use your credentials from like Facebook or Google or whatever to log in and create an account, which makes it super super seamless and and easy to use, which is really cool. Um, and also the other thing to do with Sui is it's got one of the leaders in active addresses. So the amount of users on Sui using this Sui blockchain. Um, is, is quite high. So the daily active addresses or the DAAs is a key metric of success for blockchain ecosystems. So the number really reflects the actual engagement. Like this is real people using the network. We can track and utilize to see how many people are using on chain um, is, uh, is quite high. And we can see Solana leads a bunch of the other alternative uh, non-EVM layer ones, but Sui is comfortably in third place beating the likes of you know, Aptops, uh, Aptos and, um, and, and SEI as well. So. Looking at the uh, the adoption of these chains is, is really important. A lot of those older chains, you know, looking at Cardano, et cetera, don't have a lot of, you know, on-chain adoption. Um, you've got to be careful as well because a lot of these blockchains are, are botted, you know, trying to, you know, create false um, false demand. So you've got, you have to be careful, um, but SUI is definitely growing in its users as well. Now, last thing is the risk to reward. We also look, always look at risk to reward, right? What is the risk that these projects won't actually play out what it's trying to do and the downside risk of investing versus the reward? What's the upside potential of these projects? And SUI is a still relatively small market cap compared to Solana. So Solana currently has a market cap of around uh, 80 billion, which means it's quite big in size already, right? So, you know, for Solana to try and make it 10X, it would essentially need to go to 800 billion, which is um, I think in the high of the all time high market cap of Ethereum is 580 billion, I think. So we'd essentially have to go, um, you know, 50% higher or 20 or 40% higher than Ethereum's previous all time high to get a 10X on Solana from where we are now. Sui on the other hand has a market cap of 5.6 billion. So those that miss out on Solana may think that, you know, Sui may be that next layer, layer one blockchain that could get that growth. Um, and if Sui did a 10X, that would give it basically the same size as where Solana is now, or still a little bit lower. So. I think the, the upside potential for SUI, if it you know can pull off what it's trying to do and continue to gain market share is gonna be a really big factor in its growth. And I think that's why it's getting a lot of attention. Now, last but not least, uh, Jupiter. Jupiter, I have had in my portfolio uh, for a couple of years now um, and the JUP token. Jupiter's performed really, really well. It is essentially at a basic level, you know, the MetaMask, uh, but for Solana, but a lot more, right? It's like the DeFi super app on Solana. You can essentially look at getting exposure or beta exposure to Solana through Jupiter. Um, and as long as Solana continues to have its success, I think Jupiter is going to perform well as well. So a few things that um, Jupiter has coming up, which is uh, uh, continuing to be a pretty big performer and why I think it's going to continue performing well, and they announced this recently at, at Breakpoint, is the new APIs allowing, again, developers to continue to build um, and, and distribute you know, its token uh, information, real-time pricing data, et cetera, to external parties and builders. Their, their V2 perps, so allowing their perps trading um, orders and gasless transactions, so you get a lot more you know, trading volume uh, on Jupiter as well. Jupiter Mobile is going to allow uh, zero fee trading app that supports fiat onboarding and offboarding, which is big for consumer applications to be able to utilize. Um, and 8 Pro, which is an upcoming meme coin launch pad and trading platform. So they're really hitting all different sizes and, and angles of um, you know, Jupiter and I guess the, the crypto ecosystem. And I think it's gonna be another one of those consumer applications that starts to break through. And again, based off, um, you know, Solana, if it continues to grow, I think Jupiter's gonna do really well as well. Back to that supply and um, token economics piece, really, really important when you're looking at fundamental projects. It has a fixed supply shock. So a big concern with Jupiter was the large amount of token unlocks that would have hit the market. Um, and basically what they did recently was the, um, the Jupiter's co-founder proposed a 30% reduction in the total Jupiter supplies, which is massive, right? 30% he proposed to basically cut, um, including a voluntary 30% cut to the team's 
Jupiter application, uh, allocation as well, and a 30% decrease in the Jupery um, emission. So this is huge because essentially it's going to you know, cut the new tokens coming into the market all at once um, and really you know, lower the sell pressure of these tokens. Back to that SUI piece, SUI has a really long, you know, stretched out um, you know, token uh, emission rate. Jupiter has a much faster one and they had a lot. So cutting that down has been a really big positive. Now, the other thing as well is the token rewards through voting on its launch pad. Essentially, if you go and vote and use your tokens to you know, participate in the, uh, you know, the decisions and governance, you do get rewarded through Jupe tokens as well. So the more proposals you vote on, the more Jupiter you get. And this is really you know, a great way to you know, boost your Jupiter holdings. And as well, it's more community led, right? It's not just someone at the top saying, this is what we're doing. That community led piece you know, really drives a lot more engagement and people you know, being excited about the project. Now, the annual Jupiter event is coming up uh, where an annual airdrop happens to those who participated in the Jupiter ecosystem. So more announcements should come out in the next few months, but if you're participating in Jupiter, expect an airdrop, which is gonna be really positive and get a lot of excitement. Um, and just you know, the, the ongoing uh, adoption and um, platform that it's getting through the DEX ag aggregator, through everything it's building, the features, um, is, is, is epic. So one of the highest days of activity to end October with 2.4 billion in total volume, which was its third highest day in history, which is absolutely nuts. And it hit a record high of over 30 million in daily swaps back in October. So there's a lot of adoption. So looking at those fundamentals, the adoption, the on-chain activity, the token supply and the narrative are all those things that come together to really give us an understanding of how these tokens are gonna perform. But we do need money to flow in the altcoin space. And while Bitcoin dominance is where it's at, a lot of these altcoins won't perform. But as soon as that flips and we start to get momentum back in the altcoins, I expect these three to perform pretty well. So keep an eye out for those three. If there's any other cryptocurrencies that you like, let me know in the comments below and I'll take a look at them. But hopefully you enjoyed that video. Please leave me a subscribe and I'll see you on the next video.